This here is an animated interactive prototype that we're going to create over the next two videos with the help of Figma and ProtoPie. ProtoPie is prototyping on steroids and allows you as a designer to really convey exactly how you imagine your project working on real devices. In this video, we'll tackle the design in Figma and in the next video releasing in two days, we'll wrap it up in ProtoPie. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so here I am in Figma and we don't have a frame just yet. We're gonna get to that in a second, but I wanna have a background, uh, a video or moving base background of some sort. So um, right here, I found at pexels.com and I'll link this here in the YouTube description. We have this right here, and it's just kind of a cool abstract sort of background. You can find this by searching for something like abstract background. You can find a bunch of similar ones. Um, so this is one I like, and so we're just gonna click on full HD to download it. And of course, you'll need an account, and it's free. Uh, and once it's downloaded, I'm gonna show in folder, so it's on my other monitor. And I don't like the color as is, so I'm gonna step into Adobe Premiere, I'm going to drag that file in and just drag it over here. And there we go. Now I want this to match my exact artboard size uh, or the frame size. So if I go back to Figma here, we're gonna go ahead and click on frame and we're just gonna choose right here, iPhone 14, 390 by 844. All right, so that's the size that we wanna adjust this to. So then we're gonna go back here, we're gonna to go to sequence, sequence settings, and we're gonna change this to 390 by 844. Hit okay, and there we go. So now with this selected, we can adjust over here the position, uh, the scale rather, so we can scale it down quite a bit. And that looks pretty good. Now the one thing, the reason I brought this in here is because I wanna change the color and I wanna bake the color into it. You might be able to do it with adjustment or blend modes and such in uh, Figma, but I wanna just bake it into the video itself. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just take the rectangle right here. And by the way, if your UI looks different here in Adobe Premiere, just go to workspaces and then just choose color and you get roughly the same um, layout that I have. Um, and by the way, you don't have to use Premiere for this. If you don't have Premiere and you like hate Adobe products or something, <laughs> you're one of those people. I uh, all you have to do is just I uh, you know you can replicate the same thing in pretty much any I uh, so, uh, what do you call video editing software. So boy, my brain is not working very well. I just woke up. So what I'll do is just with this overlay on top of it, we can see we have two layers down here. All we have to do is I uh, give it a desired color, and so I'm going to be using something right around here. All right, so that's 7B00C9 if you wanna follow along to the T. And then we come down here and then under blend mode for that layer, we're just gonna choose uh, overlay. All right, well, maybe we don't want overlay. Let's try lighten. Ah, okay, I think that like that better, but I'm gonna make a little bit more adjustments to the color. Uh, let's go move the, the hue. Right there, I think that's good. So it's 7300CB. Let's hit okay. And now it doesn't contrast quite as hard as what it was originally. If I move this out of the way, we'll see it has a lot more uh, difference in value from light to dark. But when we put this on with that blend mode of lighten, it just really smooths it out. It's not as uh, high contrast. That way the text that we have that it will sit on top of it will be much, much better. And by the way, this video is a video that uh, will loop seamlessly. So if I take this, hold Alt, and move it over just for fun. Of course, we extend that as well. You'll see there's no transitions. There's no uh, like skips or whatever. It's completely smooth. So what we'll do is I uh, get rid of these. We only need this amount. So it's about five seconds worth of video. I'm gonna hit Control M and this will open up our export. And in the export, all we need here for this, I'm just gonna use um, adaptive uh, medium bit rate. And that gives us around one megabyte for a video file. We could even, if this were a real project and I wanted to put it live, we could go to a low bit rate and we get it down to 584 kilobytes. So that, that'll that still work well, uh, especially because of the nature of the video, it kind of has these like TV scan lines, so you're not gonna be able to tell anyhow. 
Uh, so I'm just gonna go medium just for the purpose of this tutorial and I'm going to export this. I uh, will call this our fancy BG. And it's gonna be uh, obviously an MP4 file, so let's export that. All right, obviously very quick because it is small. And now what we wanna do is we're gonna to have to make sure in order to use video background in Figma, even though we're not using Figma as a prototyping tool, uh, we wanna make sure that we're working in a team project, which is a Figma paid sort of plan. Otherwise, you won't be able to use actual video in Figma, unfortunately. So um, I'm gonna to have to take this and move it over to a team project. All right, it has been moved over. And now what I'll do is just take our uh, file and I'm going to drag it in on the desktop. All right, so right there it looks really solid and if I go ahead and click play, we will see that it doesn't actually, oh, there it goes. I thought I had to enable a setting, but there you go. As you can see, it is working and looping, all that good stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get a basic UI here. Um, let's just go ahead and hit T for the type tool. We're gonna type in synthetic. We're gonna use um, a condensed uh, font called BBoss. Kai, all right, and we'll probably bump this up to like size 20 right there, get it nice and aligned. We don't want it too close. We don't want it over here, too close up here. We don't want kind of like kind of even, but not nice right here, just having a nice sort of equal white space on the left and right is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna right click and choose plugins and choose Econify. And of course you can install this plugin for free as well. And I'm gonna type in close, which is already, no, not close there. We're gonna type in menu rather, there we go. And then I'm gonna choose uh, this one down here. All right, so with that, we're gonna make the selection color of black, which is behind my head, white. There we go. Hold shift, scale it up just a bit. And we wanna make sure it's centered aligned. And when we do this, you'll see, you'll have the guides right there is centered. Now we're gonna move it over equal white space on the very top and right, just as we have over here. Okay. By the way, I wouldn't go much thinner than this. Typically, I might go a little bit more. Uh, actually, we can bump this up. So that's 2.5. I actually like that thickness there. There we go. That's a lot better in my opinion. All right, so there's our logo. Let's go ahead and replicate this holding Shift, Alt, and Down. Now, for your headline, whether this is for a web app or just a website or a mobile app, anything for the most part, you wanna make sure your headline really stands out. It's a visual hierarchy, typographically speaking, which means your headline is the first thing you want people to read, therefore it's gonna be emphasized the most. So, you know, let's bump this up, let's try 70. All right, maybe a little bit smaller than 70. And let's actually get our type on here. So I'm gonna pull it down. We're gonna to need to say synthetic, AI for voice synthesis. Now I'm choosing to put them all on their own line just for effect. Um, you could easily just you know type it out, it'll just consume this whole text area. But I'm just trying to be different about it. I, it just kind of fills out the design, especially because it's longer anyhow. So right there, I kind of like this. I think I'm gonna bump that up back to 70. Yeah, I think that's good right there. And we're gonna have some sort of indicator that if I zoom up here, let's take the rectangle tool, hold R or hit R rather. We're gonna have a little scroll indicator right here and we're gonna make it completely white and we're also gonna make it pill shaped. So we take the corners and just really boost it all the way up so that it's now this nice pill shape. And what we'll do in Protopi when we get to that part we're going to animate this in such a way that it kind of comes from here and like kind of pushes here. That way it kind of simulates a swiping effect and it becomes a hint to the user that you, uh, you're, the, the intention at this point of the onboarding screen is to, you know, for you to go through each of these three slides. So those right there, uh, let's go ahead and create that real quick. Let's just take this and replicate it and I'm gonna make this the background color that is predominant, and that happens to be uh, this color right around here. So it's just gonna be some white space around like three pagination dots, basically. 
So if I hit I O for the ellipse tool, we're gonna have a dot here. We're gonna duplicate it and move it over, maybe a dot here and a dot there. And I'm gonna make all three of these initially kind of be um, dimmed out or faded out. So with that, I think we'll take this at, let's try 30%, see what that looks like. They need to be obvious enough to that where you can clearly see that there's three different pages, but we wanna emphasize one over the other. So we're gonna duplicate the first one, Control D, make that white, also make it 100%, I pass through. There we go. So now we actually have four, and we could take this whole section, and we'll just go ahead and group that. We're centering it vertically, which you can do up here. And then we can also put a skip tour button, all right? So, or skip tour sort of link. So skip tour. All right, for this side, let's use enter just for something different. Let's try a size of 24. I might go smaller than that, size 20. And let's also underline it right there. Okay, I actually wanna go a little bit smaller, size 18. Now we'll center that. And there we go. So if we hit play, we'll get a pretty good idea of what this looks like so far. Very quick and easy onboarding screen. And of course we don't have the animation here. This will be uh, moving. So now what we wanna do is create a design specifically for our uh, nav overlay here. So when somebody clicks on this menu, it's going to bring up something. All right, so that's something. Uh, let's see here, let's go ahead and hold the R. I, key or hit the R key and we're gonna make this uh, our color. Let's grab this so I can move this over. Let's hit I, there we go. And I just want this to be darker initially. And actually I do wanna do kind of, well we're gonna make this a background blur. So we're gonna over here under effects, we're gonna choose drop, not, not drop shadow, but background blur. And we can see it's right around four. Let's make this 20. We're not gonna be able to see anything yet, but we wanna take down our opacity uh, to like 30 or so. And this is something we'll have to recreate once we get into ProtoPie, but this will just give you uh, a rough idea of what it will look like, kind of like a background blur when that menu is clicked. So for that menu, I think I'm gonna make it darker, by the way. So let's select this. All right, so I bumped that up to 40. All right, so I'm gonna select this and move it over temporarily just to grab our text here. Paste that on top. We're going to type in dashboard. And for this size, I think we wanna do something like 40 for the size. I think that'd be pretty good. Uh, when you're developing for mobile, you wanna make sure that when you have like a mobile menu or something that you have, that the, the links are large enough and they're also spaced out far enough as well. So I'm gonna do take this, shift, alt, and down. We'll change this to recordings. And by the way, if this is a real project, I would definitely make these components and give them you know certain states and such. But just for this quick tutorial, I'm going to do it the quick way. All right, so I would say even this background needs to be darker. So with this overlay, I would increase this maybe to 60 because you really want this to be obvious enough, uh, the type and not difficult at all to read. So even changing this to 70 might be a better idea. Okay, um, let's go to our Econify plugin and type in close and we'll choose I think this one down here will work. And under selection colors where it's black, we'll choose white. All right, now when you move it over the existing icon in that space, it'll, it wants to replace it. Let's just use our keyboard arrows to adjust that, make it slightly larger. And then we'll have kind of like a secondary menu down here, something like uh, support, and also make it quite a bit smaller 
make it like 22 for size, and then also move it over with Shift and Alt Contact. Awesome, we're gonna take all these elements holding Shift. All right, you can see I'm right there. Actually, support and contact in. Oh, I must have replicated those, let's see here. No, I didn't. Oh, there's a contact right here, that's kind of silly. Let's just do fac. There we go, <laughs> sorry about that. So let's take this, all these, and I'm just gonna group those up. We're gonna call this nav overlay. There we go, and we can hide it now. Of course, if you wanted to do the prototyping here in Figma, you could as well, but it's definitely not anywhere near as robust as ProtoPy. So we're just gonna go ahead and hide that, our nav overlay, which it's looking like, let's see, uh, if we hide this. Looks like this got screwed up. I didn't get everything I wanted in there, which that's okay, no big deal. I'm gonna take our elements right here. Just move them into here. And then also this as well. Okay, so now if we hide our nav, there we go, we can't see it. Okay, great. So now what we could do is just do a quick design, we're almost done, um, for the other pages, pages two and three for the onboarding process. And this will be just kind of like a, a, a reference for us. So we're gonna have record your voice and let's move this down. We're gonna replicate this holding Shift and Alt, moving up, step one. And we're gonna make this a size of, let's try 36. We want there to be a nice distinction. I think I'm gonna go even smaller, like 28. There we go, that's a lot better. A nice distinction between this little label and then the headline underneath. And then we're gonna take this type with a skip tour type. Let's get rid of the underline. And then we'll drag out an area for us to type. And I'm gonna type in enable microphone permissions and record your voice. It's kind of like just this onboarding step here. We'll get rid of this. Of course, this, this would move over to the middle. All right. All right, and then for the third stop slide, two seconds here, won't take long. Step two, this is gonna be choose your voiceover. And then we'll go ahead and just leave the same type here. We can adjust that later on. By the way, the line height's a little bit close on these, so I'm gonna take this and move them down. You definitely wanna have good letting or line height on your type and your elements. And then finally, we'll move this one over here. Oop, we wanna make sure we choose this one right here. Ellipse four, there it is. Awesome. Okay, so that is it. In the next video, what we're going to focus on is taking all this and exporting it to ProtoPy so that we can then create really cool interactions and prototyping in prototype, prototype rather. All right, everybody, make sure to check out designcohorse.com if you haven't yet, and definitely stick around for part two in this video series, which we'll be releasing tomorrow. All right, goodbye.